We are in LA. Yay! <laughs> we arrived here a few <laughs> hours ago and we leave in about... A few more hours. Yeah, seven hours. Yeah. We just spent the weekend with my auntie in Orlando on the way home from uh, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long trip. Yeah, <laughs> we did it in stages. And uh, now I'm going to Tonga to dive with whales for the next 10 days, which is my reward for this competition. And Erin is... Going home. <laughs> <laughs> we do want to apologize. In this video, um, our microphone broke. So some of the sound quality isn't as good as we like, but we just bought a new mic. So videos from now on, we'll have much better sound quality. Yes, but we apologize for this video because the mic was kind of broken as we were filming it. Whoops. <laughs> so, how did this competition go? Well, let's just say uh, I left the competition extremely happy, but not satisfied. This is really unattractive way to sit. So here we are, it's the first rest day of the competition and uh... Stig, what are you doing on your rest day? I can't tell. What? Top secret. What? How the f*** do you think I'm going to do? You can just tell everyone what I'm doing. No way. Mike, what are you doing on your rest day? I'm drinking coffee. That's right, you are. I'm going to keep my secrets too then. Anna, what are you doing on this rest day? I'm drinking really? coffee and then some more coffee and then I might drink coffee later on. You might. Will you be hyperactive? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, uh, <laughs> percent. Adzi, how's your rest day? Good, buddy. You didn't have a rest day. Photo shoot. No fins. That's my secret. You want to go to 45? No fins. <laughs> Alenka, how are you spending your rest day? <laughs> Hello, Drogi! You excited for your dive today? Yeah, very much. Good. Very much. Very much. Hello, yeah. Katoshka! Are you excited for Alex's dive today? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> How are you? Bless your success on this island. There's no scooters. Yeah. What happens when Alessia sees a scooter? Stuff explodes, things break. Can you show us the scars on your arms from your scooter accidents? <laughs> which one? Which one? Yeah, which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> so on the first day of the competition, I set a new Australian record in free immersion to 94 meters. Then I had one day of rest and I went straight back in to do 103 meters with the monofin. On that monofin dive though, I, I uh, honestly, I let my nerves get the best of me and I don't really know why I was so nervous. So the nerves made it hard to equalize uh, down at the bottom and I ended up turning early. So I went to have another crack at it. I went to go for the 103 again. Originally my plan was to go 103 constant weight, then 105 constant weight and then 107 constant weight and then just uh, slowly build up to that PB depth. But on my constant weight dives, I just wasn't really feeling excellent, as in everything was fine physically, everything was great, I was in great shape, I was well conditioned. But as I was free falling down, I was still going down with these negative feelings in my mind. I was still going down not really looking forward to the dive. And I've been doing a lot of mental work with myself and my dives with the Monofin this year. And I've made huge progress and huge headway. Uh, I think I just hadn't quite made enough progress by the time this competition began for me to start those big constant weight dives uh, with full confidence. So um, that'll be what I'm working on next, getting straight back into those deep Monofin dives. So I basically decided that I would not do any more dives with the monofin in this competition, that I would focus on free immersion, that I would focus on the dives that were giving me joy and pleasure. And so that is exactly what I did. All right, so it's the last rest day uh, before the last part of the competition starts. And uh, we're just hanging out, but look who has arrived. Look I was going to sneak into that there. <laughs> <laughs> 
wasn't invited. Yeah. Hello, how's it going? Very, very well. Look at that. Riley and Elena have come to hang out. Riley's about to do some diving in the blue hole now. So we're going to see how he goes. Oh, this is incredible. This should be good fun, yeah. I'm really excited. We're, we're from the uh, YouTube channel Sailing La Vagabond. Yeah. So check that out if you haven't already. I reckon they probably please, have. Please. Yeah, please do. <laughs> While Riley and Elena were there, I actually took him for three dive sessions. And uh, in the end, he ended up reaching 39 meters, which was a solid PB for him. And uh, we didn't film any of it because for the first time ever, my housing leaked, uh, which was terrifying. So now we have a broken mic and at this stage, a broken, broken housing. We're doing really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to a place called Love Beach because How we're- romantic. We're a pair of young couples, you know? <laughs> we left Mike at home. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had to say... He fifth wheeling. Yeah, he did not. Um, so Love, Love Beach is like a, a special little, I don't know, awesome little beach on this island. Uh, I think it's probably my favourite place on the whole island, to be dead honest. Besides the Blue Hole. Um, so yeah, we'll show you what it's like. Oh, some naked people. Feeling suddenly romantic? I oh, sort of am. Really feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Love Beach. What a hidden little gem. I'm actually not going to tell you where this is. It's in a secret little spot in Long Island in the Bahamas, only for those in the know. Riley! Why don't you stand up? Because <laughs> I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> your, um, your video will get banned, mate, otherwise I would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won't be able to monetize. <laughs> Love Beach was absolutely beautiful, but unfortunately, like so many other places we see when we travel, there was a fair bit of plastic waste. None of this was me, by the way. Hey! I've been working really hard not cooking. <laughs> I want to see you eat, Mike. Yeah, I do. <laughs> the chilies are really, really hot. Look at Riley's eyes. Oh, he's red. So after not feeling so great on my constant weight dives, I have announced 97 meters in free immersion, and I feel really good about it. I feel very confident about it. The 94 meter dive felt genuinely easy and really nice just I, I was filled with great sensations all the way down all the way back up and the 97 meter dive was exactly the same it, it was really what I've been looking for in my diving it was a deep dive it was a personal best and I wasn't anxious before it and I wasn't uh, nervous during the dive I didn't have any negative uh, feelings or emotions or, or anything at all uh, it was just bloody bliss <laughs> So, 100% um, success on that dive. And so, next I announced 99 meters, two more meters, one meter shy of 100. Uh, same thing, I felt very relaxed before this dive. I felt very happy going into it. And uh, I just knew it was gonna be a really pleasant experience. I um, try to, I usually try to pull myself down very quickly in the beginning. But for whatever reason on this dive, probably just because I was feeling so relaxed and calm, I pulled down a little bit slow, which actually meant that my dive time for this dive was much longer than it should have been, but I was still fine. But yes, uh, in the beginning here, I usually pull down a lot faster, or I, I pull down with much more strength. I also have recently started to pull a little bit deeper. I, uh, I do my last pull just after 40 meters. And uh, I find that it just allows me to help maintain my speed. I, I'm actually, I think I've said this in the past, but I'm a really buoyant guy. 
For these dives, I wear 2.1 kilos of weight around my neck, which is a lot. It's really a lot for a deep dive. Um, but I'm just a buoyant guy. I gotta get into the gym and uh, lose a little bit of that puppy fat, I think. <laughs> So right now, uh, I'm really just once again focusing on equalizing, focusing on keeping my body relaxed, focusing on just how good it feels to fall through the water. I think that some people often think that we are experiencing huge amounts of pressure and things like that building up on us, building up on our chests. but. Truth is, I feel nothing. Um, when you're ready for these kind of depths, your body can just compensate that pressure. So I'm, I'm really feeling only, only good feelings. Now, this is getting to the deep stage of the dive. And uh, this is when the narcosis really starts to come in. Right now, at 90 odd meters, my head is buzzing. I am high as a kite. <laughs> Lucky the line ends, otherwise I would just keep going. <laughs> And there we go, I grab the tag, I put it into my hood, and I start pulling myself up. I like to pull up nice and fast, and uh, another thing I like to do when I'm coming up from a dive to this depth, is I like to count my pulls in groups of three. One, two, three. If I, I think if I counted the number of pulls that I did from the bottom to the top, I would, I would scare the sh** myself. <laughs> like uh, after I got to like 40 or 50 pulls, I'd be like, oh my god, where is the surface? <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm focused right now just on keeping my stomach relaxed, allowing the contractions to roll through my body, enjoying the experience, enjoying the feeling of gliding, gliding, gliding through the water. So right now, I'm on the surface and I can see Adam coming up. And I take a breath, another one, and I find that I'm already recovered. I'm looking for the tag that I've buried somewhere in my hood. I show it to the judges and they give me a white card. So tomorrow is the last day of the comp and I've announced the 100 meters free immersion. So sticking with the free immersion and not doing dives with the monofin because I'm enjoying the free immersion and I wasn't really enjoying the monofin. Um, so yeah, nice clean round 100 to cap everything off and i um, pretty, pretty stoked with how everything's gone so far and I think tomorrow should be a pretty cruisy dive. It's only one more meter than what I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened on this 100 meter free immersion attempt? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Why did I end up turning early? Why did I end up not really even attempting the dive? The truth is, is that I was just done. This competition runs over 11 days. It's very long, it's very intense. And I think I had already started to decompress and to feel like the comp was finished uh, the day before this dive. I remember waking up in the morning having to convince myself that, hey, I was diving today. I had to get myself ready. It's like I had to like slap myself awake and be like, hey Adam, you've got a dive to do today. <laughs> I'm so proud of Adam. I love watching Adam compete and to train because I see so much passion and so much of his efforts kind of come together during a comp. It also is a massive comfort to me when I watch Adam dive knowing that he's sensible and knowing that he doesn't push himself to the limit of discomfort or potential danger. So for me this comp was really really good. It kind of settled a lot of my own nerves watching comps just because the competition itself was run so perfect. The safety components of the competition were completely seamless. And also because 
the more and more I kind of watch Adam dive, the more I get his style and I I feel a lot of comfort in that. I'm I'm really proud of him. Oh competition is finished. Um this was the best competition of my life. You know, I think uh, arguably I've had better performances in other competitions, but I enjoyed my dives in this competition more than any other comp. And I went into my dives with, with less anxiety, you know what I mean? Like less stress and less tension than any other competition before. And so I think that's like the, a huge win. Um, today I, I didn't do my dive, I turned early. I announced 100 meters of free immersion. Um, as I was going down, I was just sort of like feeling kind of like tired, like, oh, I don't want to do this. And I started to have like an early post to breathe. And I, I, I just didn't want to have uh, uh, like an uncomfortable last night. And so I came up at about 60 odd meters. And uh, now it is time to chill. <laughs> we are at the uh, Vertical Blue Awards ceremony and they're going to start giving out medals any second now. And um, we what a comp! But that is all you are going to see of the after party because what happens at the after party, as always, stays at the after party. Let me give you a little hint. It got really wild. And if you want to find out what happened, come to a competition. Boom! I'm headed to Tonga. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> We're off to the airport. <laughs> uh, okay, again. Okay. We're off to the airport now. <laughs> again. Okay. We're off to the airport now. I'm headed to Tonga. I'm headed home. And uh, I get to dive with whales now. Uh, so I will see you next in Tonga. And I get to edit the videos. So. Yay! Yay! This video was made possible because of our patrons. Learn how you can support us and get access to the world's most complete freediving manual by clicking here. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you might want to check out this video because I think you will like it.